Um, I, I am going to present um, not about the results of Motive, but about the methodology that was used to collect data, the many data that was collected for this project. I'm speaking on behalf of TIS, the consultancy from Lisbon, also on behalf of my colleagues Fatima and Andre, and also Luis Vega from INESC ID, who was the institution responsible for the implementation of the, the Word app. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, all the support in this uh, very hard process for by the researchers of the pro pro project, like Yannick and Martin, also from the data collection managers who, who were patient, uh, like Heike and Marina, for example. Um, so our challenge was to collect data, collect a lot of mobility data of various types. We had to collect travel data, modes of transport, trajectories, time and space, personal characteristics, and we had to collect a lot of user feedback in relation to each one of the trips that were being recorded. And I'm sorry, I cannot see my screen entirely, so I'm putting this, maybe you, I don't know about you, but my screen is not great. Okay, I hope it's better now. So uh, about the first type, travel data. Um, it's now made possible to collect travel data much better through smartphone technology on in an, an automatic way, if, if the users allow for that. And, but only it's not entirely reliable. So we do need a certain degree of user interaction to validate and correct recorded trips. Um, personal characteristics, this is easy. We just need a one-time survey. Uh, and uh, the user feedback on, on each trip, uh, which was requested to, to um, the, the samples that were addressed in Motive. Uh, so this is a multiple time survey, very intensive data collection. So a decision was made from the very outset of the project to do this through a smartphone app, because we could detect trips automatically and record them and because it's an object that follows uh, our users everywhere. So that was our starting point, but also poses a major challenge because as you know, there's a huge competition from uh, apps for, pe for people's attention. And actually people tend to uninstall apps very, very quickly. Uh, these are retention rates of applications that go uh, you, you can see here that very easily you only retain 20 or 30 percent of your users after some time. So we had to conciliate the needs of motive to collect data with the motivations of users and this was going to be hard. For you to get an idea, these are the questions and interactions that were requested to users. They had to validate their trips to check if the mode of transport work was correct, to check if the trajectory was correct for each single mode of transport of each trip. Then they had to report for each trip about their feeling about the trip, the purpose, the arrival time, type of arrival, uh, frequency of doing this trip, the, how they felt about the worthwhileness of their travel time, the experience factors, uh, type of value they were retaining from their travel time, either paid work, personal tasks, enjoyment or fitness, and uh, what exactly they were doing during the trips, maybe reading, uh, maybe just thinking, whatever. And finally, what they will, what will be their ideal trip in terms of how to use their time? So this was a lot of information being asked for each single trip. We had to get people open their smartphone, open the Worthy app, and respond to all of these questions every day to several trips. The goal of the project was to get 14 days of recorded trips per user. So huge challenge. So how, how will we achieve this? Um, user motivations to respond to traditional surveys are of two types, altruistic and egoistic. Altruistic 
is basically in this case to help us with our research, help society. Egoistic is more about material incentives, which can be monetary or other. Another important factor in traditional service is the personal bond with the interviewer. If you are speaking to a, an actual person, uh, the, the, the success rate of getting answers is much, is much higher. And we don't have this with apps. Apps are very impersonal. So uh, uh, we took a second decision later in the project, which, which was to really motivate users. We will have to have additional motivation factors. The app experience should be intrinsically motivating. We should design a value proposition and features that will achieve that. So to do that, we did some discovery of how people uh, will uh, face different scenarios of this product. We were designing through personas analysis, benchmarking, trying to find motivational links uh, to the data that we had to collect and, and, uh, and motivations of the users to, to see that data and to interact with that data and some stakeholder consultation. We made several hypotheses regarding value propositions to the user that we would pose, um, improving mobility services, travel planning, uh, real-time information, activity information, like the quantified self, travel time coach, and considering the importance of how people felt this kind of needs and also the existing alternative products to achieve these possible value uh, propositions, we came to a conclusion. The conclusion was that we should um, create a product that will be kind of a travel time coach for users. So we will not be only collecting data from them, but we will interact with users in a fun way and informative and engaging through a coach that would enable you to use your travel time better. Uh, we came to this value proposition, make your journey worthwhile. Uh, a branding, uh, we called it worthy. Uh, it comes from worthwhileness of your travel time. Um, so make your journey worthwhile. We uh, built a narrative, a narrative focused on the three elements of time worthwhileness that were used in Motive: productivity, enjoyment, and fitness. And we tried to to align this uh, narrative with with the research needs, which were which were to we had to collect this kind of data. So that's how we coupled um, the two needs, the needs from research and the needs from, from users. We designed an app based on this. I will not get into all the details, but you get the picture. We have features that are more related to data collection, uh, to the trip validation, to the surveys that were sent to users, and we had features more related to the incentivization, the dashboard, targets and rewards, and the coach. The coach uh, will share interesting info, stories, strip suggestions, targets and rewards, uh, route planner with worthwhileness criteria. So this was the plan. Uh, these are some uh, mock-ups of the intended uh, experience with this travel coach. But then when we reached implementation, we, we, we faced major challenges because it, this is a, an ambitious product very complex design and implementation process, uh, interactions with the researchers, with the local data collection managers, uh, technical difficulties, interactions with users. So within the resources and time available, uh, we, we, what, one thing was the intended product, the other thing was the possible product. So the possible product was not so much uh, this coach that we had in imagined, but still some interesting things, the interesting info on, in, on trips. Uh, we still included the stories on travel time, targets and rewards. So we, we still managed to capture some of the initial intention to, to, to incentivize people even if not fully as we had imagined. So these are some snapshots of the actually implemented product. And, um, and uh, you get the idea. And now I'll show you some of the results. 
results on actual numbers and also feedback from from users on this so uh, this was the number of uh, downloads and registered users uh, this was let's say the achievement of uh, the data collection uh, campaigns that managed to have above 5000 people to register um, uh, the app interaction is really evaluated by the number of people who actually use the app. So uh, this was about 3,000 people sharing at least information about one trip. That's 57%. That's not bad for, for an app. Um, most users, like I, sh I showed you previously, um, just uh, are curious. They check the app and then they immediately uninstall it. So uh, we could get a good portion of people sharing. But uh, this was not enough because we didn't uh, need only one trip, even that would be uh, useful. We wanted uh, much more. We wanted uh, as a target to have at least 14 days of um, trips with feedback. And for that, among the users that uh, were active users, 23% of them reported at least 14 days uh, of trips. This doesn't mean that the rest of the data is not useful. Of course, it was useful and it was used for the research. So some user feedback about this, this new data collection app. Um, the reasons for not using the Worthy app, the main one was I did not understand the purpose of what was required for me. So this is really a a uh, problem, uh, an issue of the experience or how we clearly explained what people were supposed to do. And of course, because the app was relatively complex, this became a challenge. Um, and I just forgot about the app. That's a very, very common uh, motive. We tried to improve. We had a data collection period of about six months. We tried to improve the app on some of these aspects along the way. So the, among the traditional motivation factors uh, contributing to research, the altruistic side and, re, and the rewards, materials rewards side, we could see that still most of the motivation of people was contributing to research. And it was, this was more clear uh, among people, uh, the higher the age, the more the willingness to contribute to research and the less the motivation about material rewards. Um, uh, like I described to you, the travel coach, this travel time coach intended to make people think about travel time and maybe rethink their options. So this question was more directed at uh, understanding how much people actually, uh, how much this was actually achieved. And as you can see there, that's not much. Most people said um, I, that they were basically indifferent. They just made the same travel choices. This doesn't enable to use their uh, travel modes in a better way than they were doing before. So uh, we can say that we didn't fully achieve the initial intentions at, on this level. The preferences per feature of the app, um, clearly the stories element where we shared interesting stories about travel time was, was a failure. Uh, the dashboard with uh, very interesting information that people could only access once they uh, reported on their trips um, was uh, apparently enjoyable. And also the trip record, the, the, the ability for people to see interesting information about their trips specifically. So it seems that um, at least some of the features that we built for motivation were, were motivational. So, um, conclusions and summary of this. We had a major challenge to get commitment from users on such an intensive data collection campaign. Uh, our approach was to conciliate research needs with user motivations through alternative value propositions and interesting features related to the data collected. We came to see that the most important motivational factors for people to participate were nevertheless still the, the traditional ones, reporting research and material rewards. But still, we could observe some, some promising user feedback on, on, other, on other features. So we can assume that at least partly the success of this data collection campaign uh, was due 
uh, the, the continued engagement of users was at least partly due to these uh, additional motivational features. Um, so we could achieve the basic targeted results uh, that in terms of data collection that were needed for the motive research. And the next presentations will be to describe uh, those results. So thank you very, very much. Uh, you can uh, reach out to us in those emails with any questions and also in the questions and answers. Thank you.